The thigh dog. I will play the music because it's tradition, although ugh, thigh dog, I'm just like I say every time, man. But it feels like every time I bring you on, it's about somebody new. That's the problem. I'm not bringing you on to get an update. On yeah. Injury. It's always something else. And this week, of course, the leadoff, it's Von Miller. Now, you know, it's weird to me uh, in this one because, uh, thigh dog, when I was watching the game, I'm at the fams, and you got a million people talking during Thanksgiving. So the broadcast quality, or the broadcast audio, rather, I wasn't listening as carefully as I usually do. So it kind of took me by surprise when I saw Von Miller getting carded off. And then of course you're like, come on, you can't catch a break these days on defense. We get the initial update that, you know, it could be this, it could be that, but at the very least it's going to be seven to 10 days. We're a few days removed from that game. Now, thigh doc, what can you tell us based on your knowledge as to what we can expect from Von Miller and his injury throughout the rest of the year here? Yeah, well, the good the good thing is, is he didn't tear his ACL. So that yes. was like the big fear. So basically the, the mechanism, that means like the way he was injured, where his like leg kind of buckled underneath him, it looked bad. It looked like an ACL. He looked at dejected. He, uh, mm-hmm. he got in a cart and they took him off. So that was definitely the uh, the biggest concern coming out of that. Um, but then when they, they called it a sprain, now we do know it's a, it's a lateral meniscal tear at this point. Um, you don't refer to meniscal injuries as sprains. So it's a little odd. The team kind of released that out of the gate, um, which means he might actually have like a sprained ligament in there. But the main issue is the lateral meniscal tear. So from your experience, I mean, right now we are yeah. hearing a million different things. But the one thing I think everybody's most concerned about is whether or not it's going to require surgery and that seems to be really up in the air is it true that you really just have to give it about a week or so until you can determine whether or not that's necessary yeah so it's tricky um so there's two meniscuses um and i got i got something down here that i i think i want to pull out for you i you always oh, got my hate hey okay so i got the knee. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the brady dildo all right so uh. I got the knee here. So this is a right knee looking at you. Um, so you come down. This is your your quad would be up here, mm-hmm. right? And then it comes to the quad tendon. And then you got your kneecap here. So if I pull your kneecap out, you can see your kneecap there. So let's try to bend the knee, and then we can see inside the knee. So obviously down in this hand, this is your tibia, which is your shin bone. So we're looking from top down. So these – see those two little circles in here? Mm-hmm. Boom, boom. Mm. Those are your meniscuses. And then like the bands that are going north to south, that's your ACL and PCL. On the sides would be your MCL and LCL. Well, what we know is he's got a, a lateral meniscal tear. Okay. So that would be on this side. The problem with the lateral meniscus. So that's like the cushion between these two bones. Mm-hmm. Um, the laterals don't do well. Um, so they're trickier. So that's why it's like, ah, oh, you had a meniscal tear. Great. Not a big deal. Oh, it's a lateral. So that's like, it's, it's not as happy. Um, so he, it's someone reported that he's going to need surgery at some point. So I think what they're going to do is they're going to take the first seven day, seven to 10 days to see if the swelling can go down and if he could play through it. Now he's going to play through it. It's going to hurt. Yeah. They get, they get swollen and they hurt. So like, that's the, that's the main uh, side effects. If the knee isn't locking up, because that's another thing that can happen when you tear your meniscus. It, sometimes it can flap over, get stuck in the joint, and then your knee locks up. If it's uh-huh. not, if that's if that's not happening, and it's just pain and swelling, they can manage it. He could play, albeit maybe limited snap counts. He might not be a you know he's probably not going to be a hundred percent Von Miller, but you can you can get get a nice snap share out of him. You know 30 percent if the game's not a big one. And then, I don't know, shoot them up and roll them out in the playoffs. I mean, I think that's what the team's looking for. Um, but if the if the knee just doesn't respond well and it's just so swollen every time he runs, it hurts, he can't push off it, and you're looking at 50% of Von Miller, then mm. it's not worth putting him out. They'll shut him down. They'll do the surgery. And now there's a huge debate. Well, not a debate, but there's a huge difference between the two types of surgery for a meniscus. So you want me to go through that now? Of course. Heck yeah. All right. So – there's a meniscectomy. That means they just trim out the damaged tissue. Now you can come back quickly on a meniscectomy, but your long-term effect is worse. So they're basically taking that cushion out. They're taking the irritated tissue out, cleaning it out, resurfacing it. You know, they, and it's, 
it's different how fast guys can come back with a lateral meniscal trimming, AKA meniscectomy. But there was a nice paper done recently for elite soccer players. And the average is seven weeks for a meniscectomy on the lateral side. And that would be the lighter end of the surgeries. That would be to, that would be a surgery that gets him back quick. Okay. But it's not good for him long-term because when you cut the, here's the deal. If you take some meniscus out of the medial side, your contact force goes up 100%. So that means these two bones are going to push down on each other 100% more, and you're going to start to wear out the cartilage. When you take it out of the lateral side, it goes up 200 to 300%. So guys wear out super quick when they get the lateral meniscectomy. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. But he's 33. Right. Is he really going to play till 39? He's probably going to have arthritis in his knee around 39. He's going to have cartilage wear in his knee by the time he's 39, even if this injury didn't occur. So th- that's why they're, they're going to check with other doctors, see, you know, see what the leaders in the field want to do, what they suggest, and uh, they'll make a decision that's right for him. But what I do know is that he's going to try to play through it. And if he can, if his knee can get through it, it swells up after the games. He can't practice much during the week, but Hey, you're getting the finisher out there for 20 or 30% of the you know, third downs, you know, 20, 30% of a game with all the big third downs, it's worth it. And then he can get it fixed in the off season. Do you understand? I understand the page. Cool. Now yes. the, the better case scenario for his career mm. is to get a meniscal repair. So instead of coming and cleaning out that meniscus, they actually sew it together. The only problem is, is it's a four to six month recovery more towards six months for football players. Because you got you, you you know the first month you're in a brace you can't bend the knee past ninety degrees because you got to let those sutures heal you got to let it sew up it's like getting a you know a scab on your skin you got to let that sucker heal till the scab goes down then you can start training it so ideal world he can play through it and gets a meniscal repair in the off season which bodes well for him long term because he can get a meniscectomy right now guys mm-hmm. and think he's going to come back in six to seven weeks. And it can absolutely fuck his knee up. And it we're talking potentially career ending. And now I know you're going to be like, oh, shut up. Man. Mm-hmm. That's not true. It is true. Uh, James Andrews put out an article. It There is a f- fear that lateral meniscal tears can cause an end to a career. It depends who you are. Um, the problem with that article is guys had also had ACLs in that study. And they looked at a wide spectrum of players. And they found that if you're a first to third rounder, you're probably going to come back. So take take it with a grain of salt. I think the soccer one that's newer is a better uh, predictor. Six to seven weeks. Um, so that leaves us with a conundrum, right? You know, does he take a week and say, hey, let's just clean it up, make me feel good for the playoffs? Or does he go conservative for two, three, four weeks, says, ah, shit, the knee hurts. I can't play through this. Let's clean it up now. Now, you just lost three weeks, and this is like a yeah. at least a six week to come back from. The playoff starts in what seven weeks? Yeah, seven weeks. Yeah. So like you're against a rock and a hard place. Do you make a decision that's worse for your long term career just to get back for these playoffs? If you're going to do it, you got to do it now. Because if he waits a couple weeks, he's probably not going to be ready. And you know, albeit maybe the Super Bowl, he come back for. Or do you play through it and try to fix it in the off season? That's ideal. Or does he make the best decision for himself? and say, hey, you know what, shut me down, give me the repair now, and then I'll be good for training camp. So it's actually quite the dilemma. Um, Do you anticipate seeing him in the regular season again? Yeah. Yeah. I, You know, he tweeted out, he said two weeks. I Mm -hmm. think he's hell-bent rehabbing this and trying to play through it. The question is, is it going to hold up? And we'll find out. Now, because there's – guys, there's so many different types of meniscal tears – yeah. There's like a, a little one, a little radial tear. There's ones that go horizontal. And then as you get to the progressive ones that are worse, there's these terms you'll hear like bucket handle or root tears. Uh, those are the bad ones. So, those, you know, I'm not going to get all into the medical jargon, but there's different levels of tears. You guys tears. got your own lingo and stuff. I think it's yeah. extraordinary. You got your own. I, mean, I, I got a question for you, though, Thadok, if you don't mind. Yeah. So um, is it possible for, for players to get a meniscectomy and then also get a repair? done right after that so if he so if he decides right now he wants to get a meniscectomy clean it out be good for you know i mean after seven weeks and then he's he's there for like to say the playoffs and then at the end of the year he decides 
to go no. ahead and get a repair. Can you do that or no? Never, never heard never. of that ever happening. And, okay. and not, not an insult, but that is a great question. Yeah. Um, but no, because the tear is going to be there. They're going to clean out the whole tear. Basically, if, if you oh, if you okay. look inside the knee, right, and there's like a, yeah. you know, like a, uh, it's okay. hard to see on the screen. Okay. Just imagine one of those things has a little cut in it. Say I took scissors and snipped at it. They have to clean out like a big, like uh, a horseshoe around that area. Mm -hmm. They just take that whole junk out. Um, so that's, that's the deal. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, it's uh, something interesting. This is interesting. Yeah. It is so rare to get an isolated lateral meniscal tear. They usually tear when you tear your ACL, which is. So funny. it should have been way worse. Wow. Like, like historically. It looked like he tore his ACL. You, you can, you, I slowed the video down. You can see yeah. the knee shift a little bit. It wasn't a huge clunk though. And it was subtle and you know, it's grainy and he's got high socks on and you're looking from the front. It was kind of tough to tell. And I, that's why I kind of mentioned, you know, possibly a patella subluxation because sometimes when your knees bent and your knees caving in, this kneecap can just rivet out and back in. That's called the subluxation of the patella. And that's what, um, Mahomes had, I think, two years ago. He missed two games. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. All right. Well, we got that out of the way. I mean, I, yeah. as always with you, I always feel somewhat optimistic, and then I also feel somewhat doom and gloom. But the fact that it's not the ACL, to me, seems like the overall optimism here, because at the very worst, from what that could have been, he wouldn't have been coming back until this time next year at the earliest. I mean, we've been dealing with that with Trey White for the – Last year. So that's yeah. that's that's good news. There's plenty more to get into, Thigh Doc. But before we get into all of it, the one quick question I have for you, and this has been made, there's a lot of, that's been made about this this past week, mainly because of Tony Romo. Everyone is saying that Josh Allen and his camp planted the info to Tony Romo to say throughout the podcast <laughs> that his elbow is bothering him way more than we've been led on uh, to believe. Yeah. What is your personal opinion, not only based on all of that, but just based on his play and, and the fact that he's back in the brace again today for practice? What do you make of the whole situation surrounding Allen right now? And do you really think it's worse than we all believe that it is? Yeah, well, they've been laying nuggets for two weeks. They yeah. said it, it's all in his arm angle. So when he brings his arm angle down, it hurts. And when he throws over the top, it doesn't hurt. But he's probably more accurate on like a little bit of a – little bit of out so he's probably changing his mechanics to to support not to support but to avoid the the pain in the elbow um i think his throws do not look as sharp and i don't think mm -hmm. they're as fast um you know that's anecdotal I, I i have nothing to measure it i'm just that's just an eye test do i think someone probably told us camp yeah and it might not even came from josh allen it might have come from the two sure. doctors like yeah. hey this is, he's he's gonna be on tv just know he's still dealing with that everyone forgets he's He's got an elbow injury. So right. uh, don't forget, he, he sprained his UCL uh, his rookie year. It took him five weeks. So, you know, he played right away. It, is he probably pre-aggravating a little bit each game? Yes. And did he play on a short week on four days on a ligament that's already needs time to rest? Yeah. So yeah. they probably were like, you know, he might not look that good. <laughs> he still hurts because he they yeah. just played yeah. Sunday and now it's Thursday. Just a heads up. Um, I don't think Allen's camp would do that, to be honest. I just don't think he's like that, looks for excuses. So no, neither do I. I think it seemed like somebody the, – Somebody the did. Talking, yeah, exactly. Just, or or Tony's got a half-decent brain still, and he and well, he realizes he what he's know. working he's like, he's like the sorcerer. <laughs> he's, he just knows yeah. everything before it happens. That's why I think everybody kind of puts so much stake into it. Yeah, well, he might he, – honestly, he might have just uh, organically figured – and express that i don't know i don't want to yeah. read into that too much but i do know alan definitely is still dealing with it a little bit sure. he's not going to look like himself for at least four to six weeks after that injury that doesn't mean he can't look closer and closer and closer week over week and he wore that brace for three months from the date of the injury his rookie yeah. year so look for that sucker to stay until the end of the season let's move on to trey yeah. Edmonds. what's the latest with with him i think it just you know it, once again, with this defense, you know, you, you gain one, you lose one. It, it's yeah. noticeably different without him out there. Thank God Milano's there. Without, losing both of them at the periods that we have, it's terrible. But obviously, need Edmonds back for the AFC East. Gauntlet ahead. What's the what's the latest on him? Uh, we're talking about Edmonds? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he has a heel thing, which, you know, it either, either bruised his heel and it, and it was sore or he's got something like a plantar fasciitis. Mm -hmm. I think Jer Jerris Bird used to have that. Um, 
But yeah, yeah. if it's if it's something chronic like a plantar fasciitis, that sucks because that that's he's gonna have to deal with that. And some guys just don't even get over it. It like runs its course for a year and then, and then finally it goes away. But anyways, uh, the heel thing. Um, actually, you know what? Did, what did the injury report say today? Did it say groin and heel or did it say groin? Groin and heel. All right. So then he's dealing with something long term on the heel. Um, and then the groin groins are, are they tricky? Kind of. I mean, it's a soft tissue. It's a strain. Um, again, if it's just a regular little strain of the muscle tendon, uh, you're looking at you know, two to four weeks. He's working through it. Um, he got to take a week off, so that should help. Um, but other things that give you pain in the groin, and I, I don't want to sound the alarm, but like hip labral issues or sports hernia, those are kind of things that could feed into that area. So just keep an eye out on what kind of surgery he gets in the off season. With Vaughn out now, it's more key than ever to get Rousseau and Epineza back. What's the latest on those two? They both didn't practice again today. No, they did practice today. Did they? Epinesa, Epinesa. Oh, so you know you're right. I'm looking at the I'm looking yeah. at the one here. Oh, they're they're full. They're full. They are full. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah. That's what I get. It's Deion Dawkins that didn't practice. Not being able to read. Yeah. It. That's the positive. It's all good. All right, so they're yeah. back. You're ready to rock. Good. But uh, yeah, are they ready to rock? I think well, they're good. I think. I think this game's big. This is being viewed sure. as a playoff game. And I think any guys that were on the fence that might get a week off prior in the season mm-hmm. are getting thrown into the fire here. Yeah, I think, group, you know, group, they showed a video, you know, he had a high ankle guys. Those could take four to six weeks. He's at four weeks now going on five. It's his first practice. He looked a little ginger. Can you fight through it? Yes. Can it get aggra- Does it have a higher chance to get re-aggravated? Yes. Um, Epinesa, he didn't even look like he got hurt in the last game, and he's got right. an ankle thing. He had two weird foot and ankle things that he hurt in practice last year that he missed games for. I don't know if he's got a chronic issue in there. I really don't, but um, it kind of looks like it because if he's not rolling his ankle and he's he's just planting on it and it hurts and then he's got to miss a game, it's that's a, that raises an eyebrow. Um, again, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. Mm. These, all these guys deal with stuff, so this isn't anything new, but uh, you're seeing some patterns with some guys. So, uh you know, I think um, Groot, he's young. He's coming off a high ankle. I think that's like the scariest, scariest thing for the team and, and longevity of his career. And then uh, Epinesa, you know, he hasn't really reached his full potential. Sounds like he's got some ankle thing he's going to be dealing with kind of long term. And if you and if you want my opinion on another guy that hasn't been on the report, um, I still think Gabe Davis looks a little gimpy at times. So I, hear I think he might. Mm-hmm. I think he's still dealing with that ankle injury from earlier in the year, yeah. and he had an ankle thing the year before and the year before. So that's three years in a row with the ankles on Gabe Davis. He's probably got some damage in there. How about Mitch Morris? I know it, it looks like he's, yeah. you know, he's tunneling towards being back, but uh, he's been on and off as well. What are your What are your thoughts on where he's at right now? Yeah, he must have a real bad sprain in his elbow because he's been on the report all year. He only missed one game for it. And the, the game, he did get hurt. He, he played the whole game. So, yeah. you know, well, I think he left shortly and came back. Um, I'm not too worried about his elbow. Sounds like, you know, it's a bad sprain. He's going to be dealing with it for, through, throughout the year. But it's it's workable. Um, the ankle, I saw the video. I, I had posted a tweet about it. It's a low ankle sprain. So it's a lateral ankle sprain. Those are the best ones to have. The only problem is, is the way his foot stepped back and all the weight went on it. It looked like a pretty vicious one. So yeah. I'm not surprised he missed a short week, but he should be good to go this week. And I think he will be. That's good. Knowing that. Yeah. Now, another guy we need next to him, Deion Dawkins, especially with this Patriots mm. D. What yeah. is the latest there? I think he was one of those injuries on Thanksgiving where it just all of a sudden, oh, you know, Deion Dawkins is not in there anymore. What happened yeah. there? And, and what do you yeah. expect moving forward? Because it was the last play of the first half, so yeah. it kind of got scrubbed. I didn't even, I didn't even see, it, and then I heard he's out. So, you know, so I, I looked back. So he got rolled up on. So he's kicking back, and a lineman falls on the outside of his foot, which makes it bend inward, kind of into that motion, kind of that looked like Von Miller, like the knee, but it was yeah. more of an ankle thing. So the ankle gets stuck underneath the body. The guy's hip and low back falls on top of it. It bends the foot inward. So that's the opposite of a low ankle sprain. That's an inward ankle sprain. Okay. Two things can happen when that happens. You could get a medial ankle sprain or you can get a high ankle sprain. And the only difference is, is like they both fold inward. But when you have a high ankle sprain, you also get a, a torsion to it, kind of like you're twisting off a bottle, bottle cap. So I saw the video. 
And then he's out for the rest of the game, and I'm like, shit, he's got a he's got a high ankle sprain. I looked at the video; it looked like a high ankle sprain. I tweeted it out like an idiot because it's Thanksgiving. I didn't realize he was on the sideline in the second half. And then, you know, people are like, oh, you're an idiot. He wasn't even in a boot. He was in a boot after the game, but that doesn't matter. It's not like he was on a boot with crutches. He was on a simple walking boot. You know, it's pretty protocol. Um, But the fact that he was on the sideline and he was jumping around a little bit bodes very well. So I'm going to assume it was just a medial ankle sprain. Sorry to sound the alarm on that, Um, which is usually like a one to two week recovery, Um, especially because the team called it day to day so that definitely feeds into saying, hey, this is probably just a medial ankle sprain. Um, They're a little worse than low, the lateral ones, but not by that far. So um, if he does miss like three games, limited, coming back for the fourth, then it was a high ankle sprain, guys, just for the record. Mm -hmm. He's not going to miss three. He's definitely be missing some time there for Dion. Yeah. And, they, you know, the team handled the Ed Oliver ankle sprain a little oddly, like, High ankle sprains, you're usually taken out right away. But Ed came back after halftime, played two, played two snaps, came out. Then he like was back limited at practice real quick with like a tape job. I don't know if that was like gamesmanship, but uh, they handled that one a little weird. And that's since been reported was a high ankle sprain. So um, I don't know if they're taking the same approach, being a little more aggressive, not taking uh, Dion off his feet real quick. Um, but again, if they're calling it day to day, he was on the field. Again, I, I don't see him missing more than one, two at the most weeks. Unless this is a high ankle issue, then you're looking at three to four games. All right. So before we let you go, one last tidbit here. Finally, Trey White gets on the field. Very limited snap count, but he was uniformed. He was out there. Great to see. Leslie Frazier said we can expect to see a lot more of him next week. Yeah. What are your overall thoughts right now on just when they brought him back, the pitch count, and then moving forward? I mean, can we expect to see him out there the majority of the game coming up here against the Patriots? Or do you think everything is just kind of in the court of the Bills and how they handle it from going you know, forward so are, here? All right. So the fact that he came back for that game is a head scratcher in the grand scheme of things, but agree. Not- I think it had everything to do with, I think it had everything to do with Trey wanting to come back on a one year anniversary. Mm-hmm. I think it meant something to his heart and that's, that was yeah. the deal. I'm more eyebrow raising because like, I didn't think his, his weaning back into the game would be do two series and you're done. Right. I figured they would go yeah. on and off, on and off throughout the game. Right. Make sure he's got the endurance and stuff. That was what was weird. And I was talking to Rico, you know, hopefully he didn't like tell the team like, Hey, I'm ready. And then like play two series. It's like, nah, I'm good. I yeah. Can't imagine especially with like, Amara St. Brown out there, absolutely cooking. It wasn't like they couldn't use her. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It was weird. It was definitely weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So listen, if they, if that's just how they were going to do it, they were going to do it. And now they're going to get him up to like 50% snaps and then 75% snap. That's kind of how I see it going. Um, that's what I would expect, but I don't know. It might yeah. be a tight game. It's the Patriots. He's like, coach, I'm good. Keep me out there. And then it, and then it's just Trey's back. So, Well, who knows? 50% might be enough against McCorkle Jones. We'll have to see. But the way he played against the Vikings the other night, hmm. wouldn't mind having Trey White out there, to say the least. Uh, anything I'd, want else? Him, I'd, want him, I'd want him ready for Miami. Yeah, 100%. absolutely. So if they want to do 50, ball, man. Oh my 50, God. 50% this week, 75% for the Jets, or even 50 50, I, you know, I don't care. Well, it's like Picker Poison. Mike White's looking like Joe Montana, and the Mac Jones against the Vikings looking like wow. Brady and, and Tua. I mean, you know, I don't know if it's him or the, the wide receiver core, but they're, you know, they're, you blink yeah. and they're in the red yeah. zone. I mean, I granted it was against the Texans, but hey. We could use them, that's for sure. All right, hey, Thigh Doc, that was a long-winded segment, and I appreciate you coming on, as always. No problem. Wrong music every time. And, uh, hey, thanks for the uh, little display thing, too. You always come back. I appreciate it. I'm I'm in pants tonight, but uh, I'll take a rain check on the leg leg thing. I figured you you were naked, so I was just hoping (laughs) you'd. You don't don't have those tearaway pants? You know, you just. He's got a tearaway. It's just there's nothing (laughs) underneath of them. Still in my work khakis. Oh, for you. Look at that. A man's work is never done, especially with the thigh docs. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Take it easy, fellas. Good to see you, man.